For me, it's about a mindset. Are we going to accept the same BS every day? Or are we going to have a culture that says, no, that's not acceptable, we're going to stop and fix it? Welcome to Lean Made Simple, a podcast for anyone who wants to transform their business or their lives one step at a time. My name is Ryan Tierney from Seat Matters, a manufacturing company from Limavati, Northern Ireland. Eight years ago, I came across Lean and it really transformed my, my way of thinking, my business, my life. And I'm really excited to share my journey with all of you. Unreal. I'm Matthew. I'm a podcast producer from Belfast. I met Ryan just a couple of months ago. I had him on the podcast and he introduced me to this thing called Lean. Had no idea what it was. Has radically transformed my personal life and my professional life since then. I've been up to Ryan's factory a couple of times to get a tour and see how he actions it in his own business. And it's been totally transforming our podcast business that's digital and there's no like machines or jigs or things you can turn around and we're really excited to get this message out there to as many people as possible that lean is this amazing force this amazing tool that can transform any business no matter what type of business it is and no better man to speak to than tom hughes today he's a seasoned entrepreneur he's an author he's written about lean and he has a startup that actually solves a very common lean problem called gamba docs it's the world's easiest and best way to create a standard operating procedure if that sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry. It sounds like gibberish to me. We're going to get into it today and ask Tom all about what a Gamba is and what a process is and why that is should just be something that actually gets you really excited about your business. So, Tom, what on earth is Lean? Whoa. <laughs> you start off with the easy questions. <laughs> You've got the academic one, which I can't abide. It's a... The elimination of waste through continuous improvement. Oh, no, no, we're not. We're not about, we're not about <laughs> academic on this show. We're leaving. So, yeah. And that's what really had thrown me off. What Lean was really about for years was that kind of approach. Uh, for me, lead, Lean is a leadership challenge. Lean spelt wrong, if you ask me. Can you, you've left an R out in mm. one spelling. So it's a learn. And the other big one would be the letter at the end is wrong. It's really about leadership. So if Lean's done well, it's only done well when there's fantastic leadership. And how did you come across Lean, uh, Tom? And what was Lean? What did your life look like before Lean? Well, I have two sort of phases of my Lean life. Because I, I went to university in England after growing up here in Northern Ireland. And uh, I was lucky enough to get into the automotive industry. First job. And that's where most people would say Lean comes from, modern Lean at least. So I was working first here automotive and we were dealing with the Japanese, the Toyotas and the Nissans on a daily basis. So I was practice, practicing lean before that term was actually commonly used in Europe yeah. with all the tools and techniques of lean. And that's one version of lean. And I carried that whole, that version of lean for a good 20 years, oh, wow. Come 20, on. 25 years, that yeah. version of lean. Because that one was very much tools and techniques driven and very much about uh, efficiency tools. Whereas the version that I now know and love, the second phase of lean, my lean epiphany, if you like, Ryan, you're a big part of that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what, well, what's a lean epiphany? <laughs> lean epiphany, well, it's my like some what was it? St. Paul's had his road to Damascus right. moment, yeah. right? So that's <laughs> my lean epiphany. So... What happened was I was doing a turnaround here in Northern Ireland or a transformation, whatever way you want to put it. And uh, I was going into this company. My previous job title that I'd had held in the recent past would have been commercial director. And I thought I was going into this company to reposition them strategically, take them out of the market they were in that was declining and move them into new spaces with new customers that would use their existing technology. So I thought it was more a sales and marketing type strategic role day one at me desk and the two sisters who are the owners of the company they come up to me and that we want you to implement lean <laughs> and seriously i was not impressed yeah. no i'm not kidding not impressed like because the lean that i knew up to that point very much shop floor manufacturing production on the ground used consultants she used you yeah, did it with flip charts and workshops, and it was all very dry boring and, and, and well. yeah. really, honestly, yeah. boring. Yeah. And also, I would also say, very much below my pay grade. That's, sure. that's not what I do. 
I, I, I'm miles away from that. That's like a pff, down there thing. But anyway, <laughs> I took the, the rather not very pleasant sandwich and ate it anyway. So for a few weeks, I was doing what I would call traditional lean. So I was training the guys on 5S, which is a workshop organization technique, which I would say is fundamental to any approach to lean. Doing that by myself and struggling the traditional way, I would say. And I, I got Invest NI, the local organization here in Northern Ireland. I got them to come in because I thought I could get some money out of them so I could get a lean person. <laughs> Because then I could, you know, get rid of Delegate this lead thing, yeah. get rid of this <laughs> lead thing, and get this lead uh, facilitator. If I could get some funding for it, that would be me away, right? Bad news. That's not happening. There's no money. And I was like, oh my god, I was really going through the motions of this meeting. Honestly, I was bored, rigid. And then there came a bit at the end. The meeting was wrapping up, and then they said, I actually put it in my book, the immortal words. And improvement starts with I. The words were, there's this company in Limavati. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. I think whether you're from Northern Ireland or you're not from Northern Ireland, not much goes on in Limavati. <laughs> right, forgive me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, I guess the American equivalent would be like someone saying, uh, there's this company in outside Biloxi. <laughs> 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 so uh, I visited Biloxi, no offense to Mississippians. But uh, yeah. They're they're a bit like a cult. Mm -hmm. They're doing stretches every morning, but they're world class at lean. Yeah. And they showed me this YouTube video on the spot of this American lunatic Paul Akers touring the Seaton Matters facility. That's the company Seating Matters. And seriously, I was blown away first minute. Wow, that was me going. I, I still could, remember the tour. So it is, yeah, because uh, like, we've. We've had hundreds of people through the, the factory and tourism, and it, your tour stands out because uh, I just knew like Tom totally gets this. Mm. You're just like your mouth is hanging open, your eyes, and like, oh, what, 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 what am I even saying? Uh, you know, you were really open to learning everything. Yeah, you know, I, I could still, tell. Still remember that because yeah. even at the time, I could. Our week headed off so well from the get go. Yeah, because the Invest NI guys gave me Ryan's number. I WhatsApped them. You know to and fro. Ryan told me I need to read two second lean and I need to talk to Paul Akers was the second thing. So I digested two second lean. It's about five hours long and I'd done it in two days on my commute and I got it straight away. Straight yeah. away. I, I will give myself credit for that. It was like my previous version of lean with facilitators and consultants and coaches and workshops and sporadic and ugh. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to do lean. And I was, oh, wow, that's me. That's right up my street. That's a leadership challenge. And I love that. And I've done that before. So I also wasn't scared of it. Yeah. Because I'd done turnaround, culture turnarounds, like quite a few times before. So now that it wasn't just a dry set of tools and techniques, it was a culture turn around. I saw a vehicle. Mm that I could use much more structured than I'd done it before. So part of what Paul told me was, you're so lucky to have these guys on your doorstep. So I was able to cut out the first two years of rubbish listening to Ryan, mm. not making the same mistakes you made, Yeah, frankly. That's, right. that's how you... Ryan and I know each other, as some guy said to me, there's this guy up in Limavati. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and then you go up there and you're in the car, you know, and I, I'm so excited for the people that fly, you know, to uh -huh. Northern Ireland to go to Lima because it's like, it's like a, it's like a pilgrimage. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? It's like oh, you're wow. going up there and you, you, you get further up and then the roads get a wee bit smaller and they get a wee bit less, you know, a wee <laughs> bit less small. proper. And then, you know, you're looking at yeah. Google Maps like, this is surely, it couldn't be in this place. There's uh -huh. no way. And then boom, you arrive and you're like, there is that moment where you're like, this can't be real. Like, where is this? And you go in and your, your life's changed. You know? It's so funny. I, I think it was the second time I was going up to you guys. I was yeah. so excited. And my daughter said to me, like, oh, what's, what's all the fuss about? Why, why are you so excited? And I, just, I came out with this. Uh, it's, like, it's like going to Disneyland for, <laughs> for lean people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, used to, I was so energized to go there. And it was... Uh, you were learning so much when you're open there. Like, 
And I, I would say that the it's so easy, I think, and I again I'll give myself credit of is that a thing? Is it, can I do that? <laughs> but <laughs> you permission. But I think <laughs> a lot of people go to Ryan's place and see the physical. Yeah. And they don't look for what goes underneath it. Honestly, I don't get that excited about the physical. Mm. Genuinely, I don't. Yeah. It's what drives the physical that excites me. And that's what I enjoy about interacting with Ryan and other lean leaders and so on. That that's what gets me excited. And then that's what I consider myself. That's why people ask me to mentor them. Yeah. Because those are the fundamental parts of getting it right. And so, like, to be more specific in that, are you talking about, you say, you know, it's it's not the physical. Are you talking about, like, is it a cultural piece? Is it a leadership piece? Or are you talking about, like, how to apply lean to a business that's not specifically manufacturing? What are you uh, saying there? I'm getting the what it's not. It's not going home and buying a bunch of Kaizen foam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, the tools for yeah, and organizing the tools. It's about, like, Last week, there was a Ukraine company did an AME tour, and uh, I know them quite well. And I was very, and this is just to illustrate the answer to the question that you asked. What was, they were, so they're amazing. There's so many reasons you could choose why it's difficult to do lead in Ukraine, right? Yeah. I, was, I was interested to know, well, what was your biggest barrier? What was the biggest obstacle you had to overcome to get a world-class lean culture? half expect them to say, ah, oh, the material's not in English, you know, the videos aren't in English, how do we train our people, blah, 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 blah. Guess what the answer was? <laughs> Biggest barrier was me. That's what the guy said. Uh... And that's the bit that don't buy the Kaizen foam, look in the mirror. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. the thing, because you're, what I've learned myself, like I had a lot, I was very fortunate. I had 20, 25 years of technical lean under my belt before I decided to apply this form of lean. Yeah. Most people don't have that. So most people are like, if you're going to try and teach and train your people how to do lean, well, if you don't know yourself, how are you going to do it? Mm, yeah. Do you get me? Absolutely. Yeah. So like you have to become a nerd student of lean in order to be a lean leader. Yeah. Because you can't do it without that. And like when I, Pavel, the Pavel, the Ukrainian guy who came back with that question, said that that's what the journey he had to go through yeah. was to stop trying to push this onto his organization. Instead of that, improvement starts with I. Get into the, well, do I? What am I doing? Mm. How am I practicing? What's my knowledge level of all these tools and techniques and how to do lean? Am I practicing? So I would say that's a universal problem. Yeah. Personally, yeah, which is Genius. why I called the book that. Yeah, I think you're 100 percent right. It's one of the things Paul Akers talks about as well that you can't delegate lean. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you have to take ownership off it yourself, and the leader of the organisation must be driving it. Yeah, and that's that's mm. exactly what you're what you're referring to, Tom. Yeah. There's a podcast that you and I were talking about that we saw recently, uh, yeah. Bob Proctor one, uh -huh. and the interviewer said, uh, "Be, do, have." If you're going to do. Any of these, any behavior change, any shift in your life. Yeah. You gotta, you can't buy it if you're gonna wanna be physically fit, for example. Yeah. You gotta be it. You gotta be lean, do lean, and then you'll have it. Mm. But most people wanna skip the first two. So good. Yeah. It's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody yeah. wants the outcome, but they don't yeah. want what drives the outcome. That's so, right. so and there aren't shortcuts. In your mm -hmm. kind of, new and improved lean journey for lack of a better phrase you know the second half of the uh -huh. lean journey were there some early wins or early benefits that was a feedback for you where like oh baby we are on track uh i would say they've come through getting over the challenges mm. like the first big challenge in that company in fermana you got to picture the scene i've spent oh my life two or three months persuading these people we're going to do this morning meeting thing we're not going to work for an hour a day we actually changed the pay structure before we started to do lean which was another huge change all of that's done day one morning meeting yay it's my element yeah time to go looking at the audience <laughs> two-thirds of them can't speak english oh interesting how are we going to teach and train these people wow right yeah so 
Honestly, I was driving home that evening. I can still, I can picture it as I'm talking to you. What am I going to do? <laughs> like, I am such an idiot. I But I burnt all my boats. Yeah. I can't go back. I have to make this work. How am I going to make this work? So basically, I just boiled it down to as simplistic as we could possibly make it so that we could communicate anything in less than half a dozen words on a slide and then translate them. And it ended up being seven languages in total <laughs> to get over everybody. Carnage. But it was the best thing that ever happened. And like the, the reason I say that, and I think, again, this is universal where language is an issue in companies. Nobody ever cared about those people, whether those people understood anything. And now this mad idiot here was taking all the effort and time to reach out and make sure that nobody was going to get left behind. There weren't mm -hmm. going to be any excuses. And how quickly people bought into it, I think, was a function of that. And again, that's like, I see Lean very spiritually. I mm -hmm. really do. You get what you put into it. So I put huge effort into those meetings, getting everything translated. I had a WhatsApp group that I'd post two pages of two second lean in all the different languages. I'd snip them out, put them in there. If it wasn't in their language, I'd Google translate it. The guy was taking two or three hours a day to prepare that meeting. Yeah. And we got great results. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you get what you put in. How, how big of a deal do you think the morning meeting is for companies trying to? In the uh, early days, it's just no way around that. Yeah. That I think as your lean journey evolves, um, like I know lots of companies, including my own, that don't have a morning meeting every day now. But that's when your culture is bedded in. There's no other way to start with. You have yeah. to do the morning meetings really. I had a little mantra we did in the first one. Build culture, grow people. Raise, what was it? Build culture. Cul what, what, at the beginning of the meeting, I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Build culture, grow people, raise defects. <laughs> and like, yeah. you know, but it is really about building culture and culture is such a massive word. Mm -hmm. What does culture mean? Is a you might be able to, you get a great answer for that. The uh, last we day. talked about that on the on the, the first podcast. We don't I think uh, culture is basically group habit. Yeah. You know, it can be simplified into group habit. Yeah. That's how a certain group of people Act and behave. You know that that's mm -hmm. the simplest way I can mm -hmm. explain culture. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're interested because you have a really nice cross section of you know you come from the automobile industry. Uh. You know you're doing software now with mm. Gemba Docs. A question that I have because I'm just at the start of my lean journey and I obviously have a you know a digital business effectively where uh. it's, it's podcasts. And I'm like you know, can lean be applied to non-manufacturing businesses? And give me some of your uh. secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of what we do at Lemon Electronics is non-manufacturing. Yeah. So most of the value we add is at a computer. Yeah. So we make and assemble things, but the value is predominantly the process that gives the product at the end. Mm -hmm. So like, it's really, you know, be, again, Lean can be, you can get dogmatic about what that means. So in our, comp like the tools you practice, the, the morning meeting even as to what vehicle are you using for your lean journey, if you like. So for me, it's about a mindset. That's another aspect of lean. So are we going to accept the same BS every day? Or are we going to have a culture that says, no, that's not acceptable. We're going to fix it, stop and fix it. You could say that that's a version of lean. Mm -hmm. What organization does that not work in? Yeah. Sure. Like, mm -hmm. Seriously. <laughs> so within what we're doing at Lumen, like Lumen Electronics is, you've, I've, it's one of, it's my core business interest. And like we're, that's our culture. And if something goes wrong, I'm the first one that like, could that have been avoided? And what are we going to do to stop it happening again? Yeah. And it's like, we, a Gambadox story. So like last week we had a customer call in, oh, we, we, we forgot to order X, we need it super urgent, can it be shipped? The guy that normally deals with that's not in. Now that has happened before, and it's been chaos. How do we, how do we book the shipping company? How's the thing packed? How's the dis delivery note raised? How's the invoice done? We had that car crash six months ago of basically a day out of something that should have took 10 minutes. Yeah. There's a Gamadoc for all that now. 
So the guy, we have a WhatsApp group. He's oh, don't worry, Gambadoc. It just this, it's this one. Smooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no great. Can, no can, you, can you maybe explain how you come up with Gambadocs? And uh, you, you obviously seen a, a need for this. You, you know, uh-huh. we're, you're in loads of lane groups, and you're you're a huge name in the lane community. Um, what, what, what did you see? Did, did you just seen a gap and seen that something was missing? Is that where that the idea came really, from? Really, really simple. It was my own problem. Yeah. So we were at Lumen, we were launching a new product, and my business partner, Patrick, says, You know all about that, that work standard, standard work stuff. Will you do it? And I said, Oh, no way. Because <laughs> it's like the traditional way of doing that, it's horrible. So I was, and I'd done it in oh, my whole career, I've done it practically. So Tommy takes one for the team. So I'm out there with me handwritten notes and my phone, taking photographs of the process, back to my desk, doing it in Excel, emailing and Dropbox, and it was horrible. Whole day of that. And I documented about half the process of the assembly and test for this product. Brought it to Patty, expecting like, yay, well done, Tom, that's great. Mm-hmm. And he was like, is that it? <laughs> 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 How long did it take you to do that? And I was like, oh, I've been at it all day. And it's like, don't you have a software company? And it took him to to do that. I put up with that pain at that first two-second link company. I did that for about four or five months every afternoon, that nonsense, and it never occurred to me that I could mm-hmm. fix it. Wow. <laughs> and so off we went, built the first one for ourselves. wasn't a product. First one was 1,500 quid, meant for us, only us. Didn't yeah. have a name. Uh, but as soon as I had it in my hand, mobile app, all my life, they're all going to want this. <laughs> <laughs> did one of our bathroom, put it on a few of the lean groups, and we we raised enough money to build the commercial version of Gemidox before we started. Wow. Because Gemidox has never been in the red. So yeah, yeah. built the commercial version. How many countries is Gemidox in now, do you think? Well, oh, no, exactly. exactly. Now we have a counter on the website now. 27 countries. 27 countries. Close to 300 customers, seven languages and growing. And uh, But it, it's great. I was driving coming up here to the podcast today and I was thinking, because uh, I knew we would talk about Gemidox. Yeah. What's the point about Gambadox? Well, here it is. It's not just about, oh, it's an easy way to document your process. That's what it was started as. But the big difference is anybody can use it. Mm. So if you go back even to that first use case, yeah. well, you're the only one that knows how to do it, so you have to do it. And in most organizations that I've ever been part of, there's one or two people that do that. Yeah. And then they become a bottleneck all the burdens on them. Nobody owns the standards except them. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge problem. So with Gambadox, we solved that because as soon as that phone is in somebody, the guy who's doing the work's hand and he documents the process, he owns it, mm. not me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the biggest, best thing about Gambadox. That's why we've got people switching from things that cost literally 20 and 30 times the price yeah. to Gambadox because Gambadox is better mm-hmm. because of that simple aspect yeah like that's some common like, i couldn't believe that like some of the names that are signing up to it like now people if you go to the petrol station them that's <laughs> as much as i can say yeah. like huge companies and they're not getting the industry leaders like there are a few big players that have been around for years they're not getting them because only a few people are ever going to use them mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. Gamadox, everybody's going to use it. Yeah. So it's actually useful instead yeah. of just being a wallpaper. Yeah. Let me ask you a really um, fundamental question. You know, I'm a lean outsider. I'm a lean noob. You said the word noob earlier. I love that. <laughs> What's a Gemba? Gemba, well, again, the standard definition, workplace in Japanese. I prefer seeing it the crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where, where the work happens, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that's the the technical definition. But yeah. Gemba Docs again, the guy was involved with four or five failed digital startups. That's why I know the place that we're sitting at, and it was so organic and pull based, like pull based. As and there's a problem, and it's pulling on us. Mm. And like it was, but whenever we decided to build the commercial one, it was like, what are we going to call this? Like I've spent five figures with agencies trying to work out what we're going to call it and what's the branding going to be, like all that stuff. Literally was, well, you do it at the workplace, so we could call it Gemba something. 
and its documents. Gamadox, is the dot com available? Yes. Class. Gamadox, that's yeah. what it is. We need a logo. Free logo generator app. <laughs> <laughs> Blue's kind of worky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll do. Yeah. I mean, there you go. Facebook uses Blue. Like, a lot of big companies use Blue. We'll go with that. So, it literally <laughs> was, like, you talk about lean. Like, we've not spent a bean except on development. We mm-hmm. haven't even spent money on marketing. Just on development and getting, and like that was another Paul Akersism. I was like, I, I mentor, Paul Akers mentors me a lot. He's who I would consider my main mentor. And his advice was, don't worry about marketing, mm. just make it awesome. Nice. Mm. Just make it awesome and people will flock to it. And that's yeah. what's happened. <laughs> so I, I'm sure we could grow it faster, but so far, yeah, just make it awesome has been our marketing strategy. <laughs> I, think, I think the fact that the, the standard work is done at the Gemba by the people who are actually doing the work is so powerful. Yeah. It's something that a lot of lean companies would talk about is going to the Gemba or going to see where the work happens. And a famous quote, I think I shared this with you maybe a few months ago, is that the further away, or it was Alex Ramirez, I think, uh, came I across it. Chuck. Chuck, mm. Chuck, ah. from In the Ditch. He said, the further from the gamble the decisions are made, the worse the decision will be. Wow. Uh-huh. So if we have a problem in the shop floor, we need to go to the shop floor, go to where the bolt is sticking in the hole. Don't make a decision from the office. Burn mm-hmm. him. You know, so that's the power of Gamba Docs. Uh, going to the Gamba and the information is, is captured where the work happens. I've been using that phrase in customer workshops recently. The further yeah. away from the Gamba the standards are made, the worse the standards will be. And the traditional way of doing it is back and forward to your desk. Yeah. And that's the problem. If you can just do it all there, yeah. Where the, the Gamba is, then it's just better on every level. That's what I, I wrote another book, Great Processes. The GREAT is an acronym, so it means if you're going to have good processes, they need to be done on the GEMBA, that's what the G stands for. R means they need to be recognised by the people doing the work, and you've preferably done the standards by or with the people doing the work. E is easy to follow, easy to use, the process. A is available at point of use. Mm. T, available at point of use, another one. Any of you lean guys out there? <laughs> That's often not the case. They're in a folder somewhere miles away. Mm-hmm. Test, tested and trained is the final T. Wow. But that, that little acronym is there just to, well, are you doing it to the great standard? Because if you are, you're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. So that's what that was for. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another very fundamental question, okay? Because I'm, I'm mindful that not everyone knows what a Gamba is, not everybody mm-hmm. this, not everyone that. Like, we've talked about processes, right, and standard mm-hmm. operating procedures and all this sort of stuff. Like, let's say I run a business, hypothetically speaking, right, that might not have any processes in place. I'm looking at producer Mark over here. <laughs> that is maybe just at the start of this journey, uh-huh. a.k.a. us. Why should we document our processes? Like, what's the, what's the power of it or what's the benefit? Oh, my life, there's so many, so many levels. First of all, we've got a consistent way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Second, you to collaborate and decide, well, how do you make a post on social media? Mm-hmm. And like, you'll probably have a different way. Mm-hmm. And when you both talk about it, you'll collaborate and come up with the optimum way, at least with the pool of knowledge that you have. So you, you make, it's such an engine for improvement, just the process of putting the standard in place. Do you understand where I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. Because and if you've got half a dozen people who are all doing a task slightly differently, it'll be like you'll have a best of uh-huh. just by going through the process of doing your standard. So then you've got a base that you all own. Then if you get a problem in the future, well, did we follow the standard? Have we got a standard? Is the standard right? You've got a much better way to solve problems than... Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so then as far as onboarding new staff, as far as covering when vacations happen, as for teaching, training, that, that's just endless. Mm. But I, I want to come back to Gemba for a minute because you asked about Gemba and I don't think we did a great job of innovatively answering that question. Gemba can be anywhere along your value chain. It's not just the factory and it's not just your office. Gemba is customer. What's happening at the customer? Do we really know what's happening at the customer or are we guessing? As normally, people are guessing. Is Gemba at supplier? Definitely. What's happening at the supplier? That's Gemba. Have we got people out in the Gemba there? 
Because again, in my experience, most organizations don't put the resources necessary mm -hmm. into understanding what's happening across the whole value chain. Mm -hmm. So but that also helps to hopefully bring this home for people that aren't just manufacturing. Yeah. Can you give me an example of, um, and terminology might be wrong here, but like bringing the Gamba to the customer or seeing what is happening with the customer? Uh -huh. Well, this one, let me think, in the Gamba Docs example, I'm the only person in the world that can see the standards that are created. Mm -hmm. So I go in every day and I look and I can tell by the titles, is that an interesting one? Is that something that like, I'm adding to my own knowledge base of how the product's being used? Mm -hmm. So I can see all the different applications and some of them make me laugh. And you know, <laughs> My favorite one of the farming ones. Brilliant. How to dehorn a calf and stuff. <laughs> it's class. like just great. Because that's like originally that's my background. Yeah. But when I'm doing that, I'm building up this knowledge pool. Right. Of, and when a customer asks me about this, that, or the other, I'm literally the best in the world. So they you're, could under be you're understanding I, how the customer is using yeah. your product and that informs other things, right? So it just, yeah. it, it, it just that made it all click with me, okay? So I'm thinking like you, you talk a lot about stream decks, yeah. using a wee device called a stream deck to do automations on your computer. Can you imagine if Elgato, the company that owns stream decks, were able to go out and see right. how podcast producers are using their stream uh -huh. deck, how yeah. farmers are using their totally. stream decks? Yeah. It would totally change the way they it think would. about their business. It would, because yeah. in the minute I think it's just a streaming. Yeah, stack. yeah. They have no yeah. idea that but, all these lean yeah. people are exactly. using stream decks. And, but that <laughs> that whole thing of Gamba, and I think personally, I guess, is really useful for people that maybe aren't don't think they're lean people that are listening to this. Like that informs our whole development strategy. It mm. informs our whole what are we doing with like now we are we've just in the last couple of months starting to use some digital marketing, like starting to put our strategy together. How do you do that if you don't know how your product's being used? Who's uh, deriving the most yeah. value from using Gamadox? How many non-manufacturing companies do we have on there? How many, mm. what different sectors are using it and so on and so forth? I have to go and look or I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, we done an exercise about three months ago at our morning meeting at Satan Matters where every single person, all 60 people, had to call out where their Gemba is. Uh -huh. So if somebody in sales, where, where's your Gemba? The salesperson's Gemba is when they're in the client's home doing an assessment for the chair. The carry on accounts, Carrie's Gemba is actually when she's at the computer actively doing the accounts. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the guy who assembles the frames, his Gemba is at this frame assembly table. The welder's Gemba is the welding bench. Everybody's yeah. Gemba is different. It's well, well, where you're adding the value or where the work is, where the work is actually happening. So we we done that, that project or that uh, you know simulation or, or, or demonstration at the morning meeting, and people always thought, as you say, people thought the Gemba was where the work happens. Mm -hmm. That's the shop floor mm -hmm. where the but, screw is turned. Yes, uh -huh. but mm -hmm. the Gemba is wherever you're adding the value. Mm -hmm. So the wow. salesperson's Gemba is with the customer. And if you yeah. have a job, you have a Gemba. Yeah. And it's funny because mm -hmm. our, our design team actually thought the Gemba was where they create the designs. Mm -hmm. And their Gemba is actually with the customer. Mm -hmm. So so now our design team are starting to go out to the oh, customer totally to spend time that. with the customer wow. to see how is it, the product being used. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Gemba isn't necessarily where, where you think it is. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. And where the real innovation happens is when that, the designers who were typically in an office now go out. Wow. Same with sales supply chain people. I used to do it all the time in one of my previous organizations. I would make sure that the back office, traditionally they'd have been called like that term would have been used. Supply chain people went out and visited different companies of our own to see how they were doing things. Yeah. And then they, oh, wow. And you bring back so much best practice and they would learn so much more about the products they were using and so on and so forth. That yeah. cross pollination is really, really powerful. It's something Toyota are very good at. You know, when they release a new model to the American market, somebody goes and bees that driver drives around the roads through mm. America. You know, the highways they they, they redesigned the 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 new models around being at the Gamba. Wow! You know, bigger cup holders for American cars. Bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, know, they yeah, really redesigned the product mm. because they go to the Gamba and see what actually needs needs done. Go yeah. to the Gamba, that's brilliant. Yeah. And you could say, again, like when somebody goes, oh, it's lean for me. Well, do you have a Gamba? Well, it's for you then. <laughs> 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 that's uh, like, I was going to barber, do you need a haircut? <laughs> yeah. But I do, I, I find that question fascinating personally. Like the, 
the non-manufacturing lean. Mm. I just think that the like where where you have a gamble, where you have a process, where you have issues, continuous improvement's a thing. It's just how you apply it and how you put that mm-hmm. mindset into your culture. So yeah. it's literally universally applicable. The tools and techniques aren't, but the concept itself is. Mm-hmm. Uh, See, just before we start wrapping up, would it be possible for you to give like a few more examples from lots of different types of industry? So maybe uh, unusual use cases uh, of what we're talking about. Uh-huh. Well, it's dead easy for the Gambadox side. It's like I see everything mm-hmm. from the non-manufacturing and the more interesting ones. Like, how do I mix the fuel for the chainsaw? Mm. There, Gambadox. And yeah. like when you workshop with the companies involved, it's like they're using a lot of seasonal labor. There's kids coming in the school holidays. And when you the normal scenario is, how do I do that? And the guy has to go and stand with them and the senior chap and take 20 minutes of his life and they probably make a mistake. And I have to do that four or five times before the kid really, really can be trusted to know yeah. what to do. Now, ah, oh, do the standard QR code on the chainsaw, do that. <laughs> Ask me a question if you need anything. There. Brilliant. Different. <laughs> so like, you, from there, my life, from... That how do you do something super technical? So like we have stuff at Lumen where you know we're putting safety critical equipment on a half million pound pieces of kit. No room for ever error, and it's a, a light year away from casual. Mm-hmm. So we have to develop a really specific standard that has to be followed to the letter. And, well, how do you do that if you don't have a proper, easily understood and all the G-R-E-A-T things happened? You know, you, you can't develop that at your desk. If you if it's not recognized and being followed, you're in serious trouble. Mm. If you easy, if you can't understand it, well, if you're not, if it's not available at point of use, what good is it? Yeah. And then you've got to test and train. So the, 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 I have a in the I wrote another little book. All of this is at gambadox.com. You can access improvement starts with I on Gambadox and this other book, Great yeah. Processes. I came up with three types of process. So you've got what I call light bulb processes. So these are ones that aren't very critical. We all kind of know how to do them. Like I can turn the light switch on with me forehead, <laughs> left hand, right hand, light still goes on, nobody died generally. Yeah. So that's a light bulb process. You don't need standards for them. They're intuitive. We'd like all processes to be like that. So that would be utopia, that we know that we don't need a, it's just intuitive, just go do it. But in between utopia and the real world, you have what I call banana skins. Right. <laughs> so banana, like I, for years, I peeled a banana the traditional way at the stalk. Uh-huh. You know, if uh-huh. the, it's not very ripe, the Stuff goes all over your hands, yeah. so you have to use your teeth or whatever. A Mexican guy showed me that you could do it from the other end. It's far easier. So it's a, there's an optimum way of peeling the banana, but yeah. not many people know about it. So that's what we were talking about earlier. If half a dozen of us are doing it differently, we'll come up with an optimum way. Wouldn't that be better? That's a banana process. Brilliant. And then the last one is the traffic light. The traffic light is, you better do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> or, like you know bad stuff happens when you want for the red light so that's the third type of process so again all businesses have that we have things everybody knows how to do there's things that only some people know how to do and there's things that well if we get don't get that right and it doesn't have to be that somebody's going to die yeah it can be that there's a terrible customer experience if i don't know if you're a hairdresser and you don't know what how long to leave the highlights on for or whatever we we have them so just as, in terms of standardization which is just one small part but it is foundational of lean yeah it applies all across the board well one of the quotes that always sticks out in my mind is systems will set you free mm. Mm. you know and when all your processes are documented and in a place you don't have to worry about it yeah it uh. means you can go away on holidays for Awake and your phone isn't ringing. 100%. Or you can get home at 5 o'clock and take the kids to their football and you haven't got three missed calls on your phone. 
systems do you set you free? And that's really what you're talking about. It's systemizing everything to free you up to go and do what you want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Like I have an objective. Like I'll be fifty five in two and a half years' time. And I absolutely will not have to work every day. Definitely not. I I intend to work to the day I die. But how do you do that if you don't have a structured system Systems, driven yeah. way to run things? Mm. So yeah. I live in it. <laughs> yeah, very good. It's fantastic. Man. What, what would you say to somebody, Tom, that's who who's listening to this podcast or watching the podcast? They're really interested in lean, but they're not sure where to start. What's the first thing somebody should should do to embark on their on their lean journey? Um read two second lean. And then read my book and then reach out to somebody like me. Like I, I mentor dozens of people every day. And the only requirement is that you've done those two things and you're serious about lean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we'll introduce you to the community of people. There's close to 70 people in the signal group for Improvement Starts With I, from lean veterans right up to people that have just past the first hurdle of reading a couple of books and they really want to do it and the mix makes it great and it's such a powerful community like in lean mm-hmm. like everybody gives if you're not a giver you're not in there mm-hmm. yeah. and like so we, we all enjoy that and that's the most it's the shortest cut to getting it right because if you don't reach out to people who've already been there and done that you'll make a terrible amount of mistakes that you can avoid if you just reach out to people like us and We'll help you. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, if you'd like to check out Gamma Docs or any of Tom's books, we have links to that in the description of this episode, whether you're listening on Spotify or you're watching on YouTube. If you'd like to come to the pilgrimage that is a Seton Matters tour, a Lee Made Simple tour up in Limavati, there's a link to the Lee Made Simple website as well. We'd love for you and your organization to come up and see us, to see it for yourself. Uh, you'll love this. Paul Akers described it as a, a learning laboratory. Oh, 100%. Isn't that cool? Yeah. A place where you can come and see this sort of stuff in uh, action before your, your eyes and uh, go back to your home and your business changed. So, Tom, again, thank you very much. Thank and you, Tom. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks thank for you very much. much. It's been a lot of fun.